Hi guys, Mr. Rufflewuffles here. Today I want to talk about the Takio memory segment, and I posted my first reaction to it yesterday, but I didn't really dive into the details because I was in a car park and I couldn't actually see what was going on, but today I'm sitting here in the Z house with my buddy Richtofen over here, and so we're going to be able to dive into the specifics of exactly what's going on in Takio's memory trailer. I'll be trying to look at the symbolism that is in the piece here and also look at any potential metaphors or things like that that Treyarch might be giving us. So it starts off with the katana, right? And uh, he's dropping the katana and you could say, okay, he's putting down his arms or he's giving up hope or whatever, but I think that this is just basically to show that he's reflecting on what's going on here, and we then see this throughout the piece as well, so I think that that's quite a likely assumption. Also, obviously, the cherry blossom, we know from the previous videos that I've posted that it's extremely significant in the sense that the cherry blossom is very much representative of the spirit of Japan, and I think I've talked about it enough in previous videos to not really dive into the specifics now, but you get the idea that cherry blossom itself is very symbolic, and it really is uh, indicative of the fact that Takio is thinking about time, he's thinking about the people that he has known Known in the past, the people that he may know in the future, his actions, his responses to things, and just the way he's feeling. It's all sort of embodied in the idea of the cherry blossom. We then see Tak say, time, and then it goes on to show us several shots of, well, various different things. So we start off with Der Eisendracher. This is the room in Der Eisendracher around from the teleporter with the sink in it, and so he's thinking about Der Eisendracher, and then the next shot, he's thinking about Zetsubo no Shima, and then the next shot, is really interesting for the following reason. This foliage is not something that I personally, at least, am familiar with. I don't think we actually recognize this from something that we really have actually done and experienced in-game. My current thinking about this is that this is not Zetsubo no Shima. This is the wrong type of plant life for that map. What I'm thinking this might be is it might be related to the trip that the cast go on when they finish the Zetsubo no Shima easter egg and then teleport away and then teleport back again to Zetsubo no Shima. My thinking is that this is where they get the extra blood vials from for Richtofen's insurance policy in case we don't like where we end up. And that storyline also is going to be explored elsewhere, as Treyarch have said and I've talked about in my previous videos. So that's exciting that we're going to have that story told to us, but it won't be in Black Ops 3 and so it's exciting that they've potentially added something in that could be relating to that scenario, to that environment, to that thing in this memory segment, because it's obviously something that Takio remembers. It's also worth noting, just in the background here, that you can kind of make out a building of sorts with some kind of red something or other above it, seemingly, and then also on the right side, some pink, which could then be the cherry blossom, or it could be something else entirely, but I thought it would be worth pointing those out just so you guys can theorize in the comments down below about what they could possibly be. We then see something really interesting, which I didn't even pick up on when I first watched this, because again, my screen is glossy, and I was sitting outside in a sunny car park, and I couldn't see a damn thing when I was watching the trailer, but it turns out that the characters are seemingly are killing each other, which is a bit of a bombshell because we've seen characters dead in previous trailers. Specifically, you go to the Zetsubo no Shima music video, and you've got Takio, and he sits down, and in front of him are dead bodies. Dead members of the cast. Dempsey, Nikolai Richtofen are dead in front of him as he's sitting there. And I posted a video about that previously, and I said, my interpretation of this, the way that I am reading this message that Treyarch are giving us, is that I think this is a representation of Takio's mental state. His uh, spirit has been somewhat crushed by the events that have preceded that particular map, and the proceedings of the zombie storyline are really weighing heavy on his shoulders, and it's affecting his mind and really making him just visualize these hallucinations which we see throughout Zetsubo no Shima that are pretty nasty things, like his crew being killed. The thing is, we're now seeing the same again, and I think it's important to note that it's Takio again that is seeing these hallucinations. Takio is a character who has dreams, and these dreams are things that Richtofen instructs him to pay attention to because they may well be a portent of the future. Takio, in fact, in The Giant says that he dreams of a man in shadow who may uh, be the cause of their destruction, and so that in itself is an interesting thing to explore, and I'll be doing that in other videos, but these particular scenarios where we're seeing the crew being killed and killing each other specifically, is that a sort of view of the possible future of what they're going to be doing? Is it a view into other universes? That idea 
I personally don't like. I think that that is just a bit of a cop out. But at the same time, it's getting to the point now where it's probably more likely because we have, for example, the giant radio where Nikolai says that he has killed a Richterfen in fire. He's like the one in the fire, the one with the boat hook. We're seeing a Richterfen being killed in fire in just a moment here. And so potentially that very radio is relating to exactly what we're seeing here. And these are events that have transpired in other universes with other versions of these characters who have tried to go on this journey with Richterfen and they've snapped and it's gone completely tits up and they've ended up basically murdering one another in cold blood. So what we're seeing here seemingly is Dempsey with a knife in his hand, shanking Nikolai in the neck, which isn't really very pleasant at all. And Takio, remember as well, is saying time. And then it shows all these shots, and then he says, can be a cruel mistress. So he's really emphasizing the fact that, I mean, it speaks for itself really, time is gonna do you dirty no matter what. And these are events in time that are examples of that. So we've seen the shot now of Dempsey shanking Nikolai in the neck. Let's go to the next one. This shot is fascinating, absolutely fascinating, because we see a character who could quite honestly be pretty much anybody. This could literally be Dr. Maxis if Treyarch really wanted it to be. <laughs> like, they could go pretty much anywhere with this. Now, I think the most likely assumption to make, and I think the most likely theory, is going to be that this is someone, potentially a family member, or a close friend, or maybe a lover of Takio from back home in Japan. Potentially, she's looking in on something that she shouldn't be looking into, or whatever it might be, but she's there, and she's sort of edging this little door open, what her purpose is. I'm assuming it's a she, by the way, just because of the fact that I think that that's the most likely assumption to be making, that it's a lover of Takio or something like that, or a family member, like a sister or a mother or something along those lines anyway. And I think she's looking in with some concern or something like that. She's seeing something she's not supposed to. She's kind of edged the door open and that's all she's going to be doing because she's kind of looking in on a situation. What her purpose is going to be, what her significance is, all of that sort of stuff is a mystery in my opinion. I don't think that this is something that we can really guess. I think that we just don't have enough evidence and enough information to really make an educated guess here. But I really, really hope that when we do learn more of her, she has some significance, some kind of importance to Takio's story particularly. If, for example, uh, she was uh, Takio's lover or something, and for some reason she ended up getting killed because of something that Takio was embroiled in or something like that, that would be some real depth to this character that we have never seen before. Never! Takio is the kind of guy that just kind of bottles things up and does everything for the glory of the Emperor. But what if there's some other stuff going on here? There's, there's a love interest as well, and maybe she gets killed because of his loyalty to the Emperor, and so he's got this sort of chip on his shoulder that he's constantly got to preserve his loyalty to the Emperor because of the fact that it was his loyalty to the Emperor that got his wife killed, or got his lover killed, or got his family member killed, or something like that. Like, if there's depth there, then I really hope Triarch explore it, and I really hope they run with something that allows us to really think about what could possibly be going on inside Takio's head. We then see the shot of what I think is Zetsubo no Shima's boat. The intro cutscene obviously has the boat and it's very foggy and stuff outside, so I think that's what we're seeing there. And then we see Takio literally killing Rectophon in a teleporter. R.I.P. Can I get a press F to pay respects in the chat down below? Like, this is some gruesome stuff. He is standing there, Rectophon is seemingly not even armed necessarily, and Tak just slice. Done. Dead ding-dang doodly. He not going to get up after that. Once again, it makes us question what exactly is going on here. Are these visions of the future? Are these visions of other worlds, or are these hallucinations of things in Takio's head that he is desperately hoping doesn't happen, but he's worried that the strain of this mission, this task that they are undergoing right now, could become so difficult to bear that he might just break at one point, one of the characters might break, Dempsey might break, Richtofen might break, Nikolai might break, and just kill the rest of them and just destroy everything, destroy their entire work, destroy the integrity of the quest they are going on, and basically bring the universe into a much more negative place. There's then this shot here, which is super dingy, and I'd like you to leave a comment down below with what you think this is, because I personally can't make it quite out right now, but maybe with some assistance from you guys, I would be able to. And we then see the Richtofen being killed in a fire that I mentioned. He's standing there, he's kind of dabbing, and Nikolai is standing just to the side, you can see that's Nikolai's arm, just to the side, and seemingly doing nothing. And so Nikolai's quote from the giant is that he's killed a Richtofen in a fire, and we're seeing a Richtofen being killed in a fire in this exact scene. And so I think it would be way too much of a coincidence for 
us to be seeing that happening here and it not to be relating to that radio, which we've not been able to explain for the entirety of Black Ops 3. We've been sitting here going, hmm, so it's really weird that Takio talks about a man in a mirror, a reflection of himself, and that's exactly what Monty talks about, right? And then Dempsey talks about triggering paradox visualizations, and Nikolai talks about the fact that he's killed multiple rictophones. He's killed one with a boat hook, one in a fire, and one in a, oh, okay, sorry, I'm not supposed to be talking about that. Everything's going to be just fine. Like, he stops himself as if he's been told that he's not supposed to be giving this information to whoever he's been talking to, and uh, I think that this scene has to be linked to that. And if it's not, then it's just the most stupidly obvious coincidence in the world that Treyarch really should have picked up on. But I don't think Treyarch's made a mistake here. I think that this is intentional for sure. We then see this building once again with the cherry blossom. And then also we see Takio here apparently raising his sword or something like that. And you've got Richtofen and MC just looking there, kind of chilling out pretty much awaiting their fate by the looks of things, and once again, it's the same as before, it's another situation where we kind of have to wonder if this is a different universe, or if it's just something in Takio's head. I'm hoping it's the latter. If it's another universe, then damn. I mean, it makes the most sense, that's the thing, it does make the most sense at this point for them to be other universes and other representations of what's going on because of that giant radio, but it just feels weird. It feels like there's something that we're really missing here that would make this make sense, and I don't think we'll have that until Revelations. We then see the blood spilt on the wall here, and this is what makes me really enjoy the idea of Takio's lover or something like that being killed because of Takio's actions, and this is her blood being spilt. This is a really interesting shot. We've got this really dimly lit area, and Nikolai is standing there, but unbeknownst to him, seemingly, Dempsey is off to the side, and he's pointing a gun at Richtofen's head. So it's not just Takio that's going bonkers right now. Dempsey very much is as well, as you can see, because he's literally holding a gun to Nikolai's head without him even knowing. And then we see Richtofen doing his little crouch down animation that we first saw in The Giant. And that pretty much brings us to the end of the visualizations that we're seeing in this little series of shots between time and can be a cruel mistress. That's sorted now, so that's great. Lovely. In its relentless march forward, it robs each of us of many things. And then we see this tree. And this tree, everybody is likening to the tree from Nightmares, right? You're inside the woman's mind and you're looking at the tree and it's the pretty much same deal, except it's not a cherry tree, it's obviously this sort of broken and twisted tree in the Nightmares experience. And so, it's something that I think is definitely symbolic, probably of the fact that you have one person's mind and you have this tree, this tree of life, Yggdrasil, or however you pronounce it, the tree of knowledge, the world tree or whatever, you can draw so many conclusions from that kind of symbolism and idea. But then in Takio's mind, you have a much more preserved version and it's the cherry tree. This is like the root of Takio's thinking, the root of his core being and it's something that I think he sort of holds himself to. He then says uh, uh, moments, experiences, people, and so time, can take them all from us in an instant. Such things are gone forever, unless they live on within our hearts, and then suddenly we see the forest, the light in the forest, get much brighter. And then he says, our minds, and the light gets brighter still, and then our memories, and it reaches a complete grand conclusion, and the screen pretty much goes white. So, what I think we are seeing here is our first real direct symbolic link to the fact that in the Black Ops 3 campaign, we have the forest, the frozen forest. Imagine somewhere calm, imagine somewhere safe, imagine yourself in a frozen forest is obviously the theme throughout much of the Black Ops 3 campaign and much of the marketing material that came before it as well. And in that material, we saw the fact that the forest really is an inner place inside someone, inside someone's head, inside someone's heart, inside someone's memories, where they can really just go and be at peace. It is somewhere that is lacking corruption from the horribleness of the world around them, and rather it's just a place of tranquility. And I think that Triarch are trying to bring that idea forward from the campaign into zombies now and say that the characters sitting in the forest are actually just a sort of... I guess, visualizations of the characters in the minds of the characters. So Takio is maybe sitting down in Zetsubo no Shima and he's contemplating what's going on and he's really reflective and things like that. And in his head, he has a forest and the forest is tainted by zombies. In fact, you have Maxis's quote from, I believe it was the giant actually as well, where he says that he hopes that this great evil that has haunted his dreams, this great evil that has infected their every sort of modicum of existence will be rid of them by the bombs that he has dropped on the Apothecon Menace outside the house. And 
maybe that is exactly why we're seeing in the forest, it's not just a tranquil, calm, frozen forest, but rather it's full of zombies. And it's full of real sort of destruction, I guess, as well. And then we cut to the cherry tree. And then he says, for all its cruelty, time can also be a great teacher. Through the changes left behind in its wake, we can learn and we can grow. No pun intended, I'm sure. Screws that about Oshima. Screw that map. <laughs> we can come to understand those truths that have eluded us in the past, and only then can we truly understand ourselves. The thing I like about Takio as a character is that where Richterfen really isn't particularly easy to understand, he's a bit of a enigma, I think, where Dempsey is kind of devoid of feeling in a lot of scenarios, where Nikolai is kind of corrupted by his drunkenness and by the horrors of his past, Takio is a little different, and he really reflects in a way that I think the other characters don't do, and it's in a way that is quite open to uh, interpretation for the reader or the viewer or the listener or whatever it might be for the player. And so here when he's saying we can come to understand those truths that have eluded us in the past uh, and only then can we truly understand ourselves, not only is he talking about his own situation, not only is he talking about the crew, but he's talking about life in general, right? He's talking about us as a player base, he's talking about the entire whole shebang. And he's basically saying that only by really understanding time for all its cruelty and all its horribleness and all of that, it can be a great teacher and we can really learn from it. We can come to understand those truths that have eluded us in the past. That, in my opinion, is a quite nice summary of the zombie story in a nutshell. Trying to grapple with the cruelty of time and in doing so, understand what the hell's going on, what has transpired, what will transpire, why it will transpire, and all that sort of stuff. So it's quite a nice little way for Takio to wrap this up. And I think that that's probably going to be quite a nice way for me to wrap this up as well. So thank you for watching. Leave a like if you've enjoyed. I've just dived into the Takio memory segment for like 20 minutes or something. Fingers crossed it's been an enjoyable 20 minutes or 15 minutes or however long it's been. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.